streets of Paris, the world seen once again what terrorists stand for. They have nothing to offer but hatred and human suffering. And we stand for freedom and hope and the dignity of all human beings. And that's what the city of Paris represents to the world. And, and, and that spirit will endure forever, long after the scourge of terrorism is banished from this world. Well, that was President Obama yesterday condemning the deadly attacks in France. But why is the president, many are asking, not calling the French terrorists exactly what they are, extremists? We're going to ask Dr. Kanta Ahmed, a Muslim scholar and author in the land of invisible women, a female doctor's journey in the Saudi kingdom. Doctor, we thank you for joining us again. Um, it has been a horrific week as it relates to terrorism. When you hear world leaders refusing to use accurate language as it relates to radical jihad, radical Islamism, what is the danger in that in your mind? Yes, I think you've hit the point. There's been a use of the words radical or extremist. We have to name the uh, pa parent of this movement. We have to name Islamism. Why? Is Islamism is the political totalitarian ideology that's inspiring all of these acts. It inspires the acts that we've seen in Paris, Sydney, uh, in Peshawar. It also is something that's disguised and privileged. Uh, is disguised as Islam and privileged by democracies like ours, which deem religion sacrosanct. And so if we don't expose it, Islamism gains a lot of capital and power. I think our president is avoiding using that because he's reluctant to name Islamism as the problem. Most Muslim-majority countries, many of them, are either Islamist in nature or patrons of Islamism. Are you saying that is why there's a fear of some to step up and separate the two? May well be. May well be, because we have to see Saudi Arabia, a major U.S. ally, is actually uh, very much patronizing Islamism. We're seeing Pakistan is fundamentally Islamist in its democracy. So it raises very difficult issues. While I have you here, um, so appreciate this perspective that you offer us. Can you link for us, please, anti-Semitism and what you saw in these attacks uh, with the hostage situation at the kosher deli and how it relates to radical Islamism. Absolutely. Islamism, one of its fundamental tenets is that anything Israeli, Jewish, to do with Judaism is its chief cosmic enemy. So fundamental to Islamism, but not Islam, is genocidal anti-Semitism. It's very significant that the kosher uh, grocery uh, uh, and its people were targeted. By not naming terrorism what it is, by not naming, naming radical Islamism, does that is that a move to not protect citizens, both in the Muslim community and the globe, in your mind? Maybe not a deliberate move, but it is certainly seeking a particular kind of denial and shelter. And the time for denial is over. Yeah, we saw that play out this week. Unfortunately, too many lives lost at the hand of terrorists. Dr. Ahmed, we thank you always for being here. Thank you, Elizabeth. You got it.